Hi, I'm Jim Fawson with Legal Help for Veterans, a veterans disability law firm with a nationwide practice. And we're here to bring you four minutes with Legal Help for Veterans. Every week we try to cover a couple of quick topics, uh, maybe something you don't know, something you want to follow up on, or maybe a little piece of advice we'd like to give you to make sure you don't have to follow up on it later. And so today we're going to talk about the need for a medical nexus. You say, what the heck is that? That just means a medical connection that is recognized uh, by medicine between your current diagnosis and what you thought occurred in service that causes the condition. So it's a link, it's a, if you will, a medical link. Now, medical nexus opinions or determinations cannot be made by a lay person. You can talk about symptoms, but you can't talk, you can't give a medical opinion that this is connected to this. You can talk about the time frame that ever since this happened, every month, every quarter, every year, I have this problem. So you can talk about that, but you cannot talk about the medical opinion. And, re and really you get that from your private doctor, you might get it from a VA doctor, you might get it from uh, the VA C&P examiner who does a, a evaluation with you once you file a disability claim. At Legal Help for Veterans, we have a nurse who every day, uh, five days a week, is reviewing your medical records to help establish that medical nexus connection. And we have a doctor and a, and a nurse practitioner who every week is writing opinions, connecting those symptoms we see in the medical records and the service connection issue to your current diagnosis, giving that medical nexus opinion. So you have to have those things that diagnosis, the service connection, the medical nexus to get your disability granted. And this will transition us into the second issue we want to mention that's in the news. Uh, there are presumptive conditions that the VA has seen so much of and science and medical research so agrees to that it is presumed that if you had this exposure or this event, then the medical nexus is connected. It's the, the medical link is made. The most obvious might be exposure to Agent Orange in Vietnam, boots on the ground, and you now have developed uh, diabetes. There's a presumptiveness uh, to that, that that's a connected um, medical condition. Two things have happened recently. We want to let, let you know that uh, uh, the VA has determined and issued regulations that COVID um, is going to be viewed as a presumptive condition for those who uh, die from or are survivors of COVID um, for VA disability pay. Now that's going to be, uh, it's a provision in an act passed by Congress. Uh, this is for individuals who have served active duty for more than 48 hours at one time and developed the illness during that service period or within 14 days after a qualifying period of duty. So COVID and related things may now be a presumptive condition for certain active duty uh, military personnel or veterans status at that, at that point. So that's kind of interesting. We want to pass that along to you. And one other really more significant presumptive condition situation deals or comes out of the National Defense Authorization Act, which was uh, passed by Congress, vetoed by President Trump. The veto was overridden by Congress, but from a veteran's disability standpoint, you should know that the law uh, will give roughly 34,000 veterans diagnosed with hypothyroidism, bladder cancer, or Parkinsonian uh, access to disability compensation. It'll make that medical nexus connection. Medical science has recognized this for some period of time. VA and the Office of Management and Budget, uh, going back a couple of administrations, was always worried about if we recognize these presumptives, it's really gonna cost a lot of money. Well, now Congress has said, quit screwing around, putting it in the act, and these things are taken care of. Unfortunately, the bill did not cover hypertension, which we see more claims of, uh, and that uh, there are a couple of congressmen who are, have said they're going to continue working on getting hypertension as a presumptive condition. 
So I wanted to let you know about those two changes. It ties into that idea of what you have to do on a medical nexus. It also reminds us that uh, at this time, mask up as appropriate and do your part, continue to do your part serving uh, for your country, if you will, by masking up and taking the vaccine. As we go to our next item, uh, we want to remind you, as always, that we are a host of and a producer of VeteransRadio.net. Veterans Radio has been on the air for 17 years, and we want to point you to a podcast we recently did called Trump's Legacy at VA. We spoke to Rory Riley Topping, who's sort of a uh, thinker in this area, and it's sort of interesting. I think you'll like it. Go, go to VeteransRadio.net. Plop over to the uh, podcast and listen uh, to that interview about the Trump legacy at VA. And we also are a uh, significant contributor to the Medal of Honor site, Home of Heroes. And for this segment, we want to direct you to go read the story on Jared uh, Monty. Um, he was a sergeant first class uh, in Afghanistan um, who... Uh, made the ultimate sacrifice. And these men uh, should, who have received the Medal of Honor should not be forgotten. So thanks for listening to uh, me, Jim Fawcett, a veterans disability lawyer at Legal Help for Veterans. And come on back next week. We'll do another four minutes with Legal Help for Veterans.